This screencast will give a basic example of how to map MIDI notes in live to key presses um, in OS X. So the idea is that we can use MIDI note data to simulate key presses in other applications and I'm sure that you can imagine a wide variety of um, outcomes and uses for this sort of stuff. Okay, so I've got live here, but I've also got Oscillator running in the background. And I've got a blank Oscillator document here, which I'll come back to in a moment. Now, over in live, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my MIDI preferences, and you can see that um, there's an output device here called Oscillator In, and it's corresponding to port 8000 in Oscillator. So I've just turned the track to on and the remote to on for that virtual device. And I've got a MIDI track here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to route the output of my MIDI track to that device. So to Oscillator in port 8000. I'm also going to add a max for live device to this MIDI track and it's one that I've created and it's called note to cc 2d note offs. What this device does is it converts a MIDI note and it takes the pitch element and converts that to a MIDI cc number and it takes a mm -hmm. the velocity element and converts it to a MIDI CC value. So the point of this is that we can have individual MIDI CC events for every MIDI pitch, and those events can then be converted to key code events in Oscillator. I can then create a blank MIDI clip in live, and because I've got the MIDI editor preview button enabled, is this uh, blue headphone button here. I can then just send out the range of notes that I want to map to my computer keyboard. So in this case, I'm just going to send out from C3 all the way up to C4. Now, because I've previewed all of those notes, the data has been converted to MIDI CC values by this Max for Life device, and those CC values have then be, been sent to Oscillator. So if I go back to my Oscillator document, it's no longer a blank document. And you can see here that we've got an individual event for each one of those MIDI notes. And in fact, C3 corresponds to MIDI CC 60, and C4 corresponds to MIDI CC72. I can then hold down shift, select all of those uh, different messages, and I can map them to a key code event. Now we need to tell each of these key code events which actual key numbers we want to press. Every time we receive a note on, that's going to uh, press the key down. Every time we receive a note off, that's going to depress the key. So I can then go up to Window and Oscillator and bring up my key code helper. And let's say I wanted to start off with the key Z. I can then press the key Z and under character that shows me Z, as well as the corresponding key code that I can choose for my event mapping. So Z is 6, X is 7, C is 8 and so on. So I've basically mapped um, the row from Z to M and then the row from A to G to each of those MIDI notes. If I go back to live, I can then go through and I've just 
um, disabled that preview button so that as I'm sequencing out MIDI data, you can see that I'm not automatically um, triggering key presses on my computer keyboard. And I'm going to also disable loop on my MIDI uh, clip because that will um, stop my data from looping through and endlessly triggering key presses. So if we just watch as I trigger this MIDI clip, we should see that each of these events will be triggered and they will correspond to um, key presses on the computer keyboard.